Hey everybody, I'm Kevin Hoy, candidate for Vermont State Governor, and I want to tell you about the little town that could. The Green Mountain Boy Patriot Town of Stamford, Vermont. They just became a constitutional sanctuary city. One of the nation's first conservative autonomous zones. The town of Stanford, Vermont just terminated the unconstitutional governor's orders and declared themselves a constitutional town. The first of many, we hope. So pass it on, America. Where we go one, we go all. So the mo Helen, the, the motion was made by myself. It said I, I would make the motion to affirm that we will uphold the Constitution of the United States of America in the Constitution of the State of Vermont. Is that right. sufficient? Okay. Yeah, then just capitalize the old Constitution. English teacher. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, hey. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept when all the uh, changes. Yeah. changes. Okay. Second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank Aye. you. Okay. Termin I think we can move on. Termination of Governor's Emergency Order pursuant to DSA Title 20, Section 13.3, and implementation of local recommendations for safety and protection. Yes. Gann brought this up. Uh, we discussed this in executive session. Yep. And now we are bringing it out to the public for discussion. So do you want me to give a... Sure. Laura, you probably have that <coughs> section and article <coughs> number. Um, yep. What it is is a, under... Title 20, Section 13.3. <clears throat> Under emergency orders, the majority of a select board in any town can terminate the governor's emergency order and assume local control. And so that's what we're looking to do to the select board assume local control from the governor. Specifically for a certain set of... For this particular emergent, this particularly so-called emergency we're in now. Because we have to, we're at a border town, we have to cross the border all the time, and so it's a little different, and the rules make it really hard on us. There's a lot of, lot of reasons, you know, it was brought up at the last select board meeting that as of now these, you know, the governor's not enforcing anything, but that could change tomorrow. And then all of a sudden we're like in Massachusetts where, you know, you can get a $300 fine for being out on the street without a mask, you can get fined for not being back in your home at 10 o'clock. Unlimited numbers of things these tyrant governors can start enforcing. This way, here we can deal with it locally. We can assess the emergency. We, we, the select board discussed this. Chris, you weren't there, but you wouldn't see any changes right now. Like in this room, half the people have masks on, we have six foot distance. Um, yeah. But down the pike, this could be very, very important. Now, this is not a, like an end run. We don't just like do this. The governor more than likely will fight against us. Okay. It, it, it's not a, a blanket power issue that we're talking about. There's a specific set of what eleven points of power that this addresses. Could you clarify, Chris? Uh, certainly. The, the section three this only addresses the functions of set forth in section nine. So it's only eleven specific powers that it's talking about. To the coronavirus, right? I just say yeah. or just be general. 
like this, like, you know, you're talking about, like, the, the ability to establish lines and stuff like that. That is, uh, I think, separate entirely from what we're talking about here. No, it's not. What this section does is this allows the local <coughs> town to assume control. So he wouldn't be able to find us, he wouldn't be able to tell us, wouldn't be able to do anything within the town. Now, it's our understanding the school is under a whole different branch of governance. Well, he wouldn't be able to do any of the, he wouldn't be able to enact any of the powers that set forth in, what is it, Title 20, Section 1, Subsection 9. Okay. Um, for purposes, can I ask a question? Yeah. Go ahead. For, for purposes of discussion, I think accurate discussion, can someone read the exact, uh, the exact order that, the, that, the, that we're saying that the town can override? I'd like to hear the exact language on that. Do you have that, Larry? Uh, I do. Bill has it. Okay. We'll start off by reading the exact language. And this is section 13, subsection 3. Upon receiving notice that a majority of the legislative body of a municipality affected by a natural disaster no longer desires that the state of emergency continue within its municipality, shall declare the state of emergency terminated within that particular <coughs> municipality. Upon the termination of the state of emergency, the functions as set forth in section 9 of this title shall cease and the local authorities shall resume control. Um, She's had her hand up. Brooks? Uh, yeah, I have a question. A, do we have a town attorney? Yes. Uh, and B, okay, and then B, what do we have to do with why is our town, or should our town be exempted from, um, from the governor's recommendation for the entire state, which has kept our, our state very safe, and in fact, the safest in the country, um, and I have to go with the idea that that is because we have complied with the governor's recommendation, he's been commended, Would you like to um, quarantine for 14 days every time you go get groceries? So then you have, in two weeks, you can go get them again. I do believe that as a board of town, and I understand your point very well, because I see that sign when I come back from the big walk. However, I think that we are all very reasonable individuals, and we know um, that, that we can't possibly quarantine every time we come back from you know, the, the western part of Massachusetts. However, we can comply to the best of our ability while we are in public with the recommendations that our governor has made. That's what we wanted to do, keep the governor's recommendations. We just didn't want the people in the town to get fined every time they went to Western Mass to get our groceries. Has that happened? Has that happened? No, but we're no, but ahead. we don't. We don't trust that it won't happen. And there's a lot of other issues also. Okay, there's governors already talking about going in and taking people out of homes, old elderly people, putting them in nursing homes. Okay, and, and that's, we're trying to head all of that stuff off if we can, okay? Um, we haven't talked to the town attorney, but we talked to him. Huh? Could you, could, you buy, could you provide evidence of what you're talking about? Because I've never heard of that, and it's well, they're also sending COVID patients into the so, nursing homes. <laughs> what I would like to do is let you finish your sentence, Dan. I didn't hear what Carolyn Carol, Carol, Carol did And Dan was speaking. I'd like to have him finish his sentence before we go on. Go ahead, Dan. Well, the, the, we, we talked to an attorney. 
As Bill mentioned, the Attorney General, this is kind of a gray area for them. Okay? So, we have an attorney that brought us up to speed on this, and it's not going to cost the town a penny, and we're looking to pursue it, and then we, if we were to win, then we can set the guidelines. When we discussed this a couple weeks ago, it's like most of the governor's guidelines that are in place right now for other or other than quarantine when you cross the border wouldn't change. I mean, you know, social distancing, mask, mask um, you don't wear a mask now. Right, but we got social distancing. You don't need to wear a mask in a town meeting if you have the six feet distance. We've gone around this hell in a hundred times since this started. The governor's orders do not say you have to wear a mask in here. It's if you can't maintain social distancing. And we know what the risks are. And, you know, seeing what they're doing in other states, and don't, and don't tell me you don't read this stuff. The CDC puts this stuff out all the time. You know, they're changing the laws and the regulations in states across this country left and right. Net, some places you're getting fined, some places you aren't. Some places they're, they're tracing people, some places they aren't. And, you know, anywhere these things have been brought to court, they have lost under constitutional grounds. And so, this doesn't... It doesn't cost the town anything, and it doesn't change anything, and I understand. I understand a lot of you are scared, and that's why you stay home, and that's why you, you know, but when you look at this whole county, we are not in an emergency. One person has died since March. That is not an emergency, okay? If, if thousands of people were dropping, I'd say we got an emergency. But you had one death. You all go turn in your cars, your car keys. There has to be at least five deaths in this county in the last eight, nine months. Okay, can we recognize somebody else? Sure. Yeah, what's this one person has died? It's two, actually. It's two now? Two. That's to what, where? In Bennington County. Bennington County, 37,000 population. Okay. But you didn't clarify where you were talking about. Well, you know, there's not just two people in the county. Clarify. Okay. Two. Pat Sullivan? There's a lot of people raising their hands. This, so. is, from the, uh, this is from the governor's office. Vermont hunters near a state border. Vermonters who live near a state border and regularly travel to and from a neighboring state may make day trips
quarantined for 14 days when I visit my parents in Clarksburg. And people don't think it will happen, yet I know for a fact that a student of this school went to Clarksburg for a Christmas tree and was asked what the ass was made to quarantine for 14 days because the teacher asked him where that student went to get the Christmas tree. So it can happen. So that's the first thing. The, the um, <clears throat> mask thing, you're saying that it's out of respect. The mask, at best, at, at best, the masks are 46% effective with the best mask that you can use, okay? I'm pretty sure that number is right on the money, but you can look it up. That means that you're taking and you're putting everybody at risk more than the mask is, is used for or effective. So everyone shouldn't be here. You know I have a medical problem and can't wear a mask. Yeah, I stay six feet apart from everyone, and the people I'm not six feet apart, I've asked if it bothered, and they said no. So I'm sorry if you feel disrespected, because I never mean any disrespect to you, Pat. I have all the respect in the world to you. But when you make statements like that, it does disrespect me, personally. Okay, thank you. Well, then, then okay. that's what I'm saying. So there's one person that has a medical condition. We don't know if this person over here has one. So that that's where I look and I say, you know, I, I, I go write all this down. And it is common sense. And we talk about all the way back to when Clay mentioned he made a statement way back at the beginning of this meeting. And he says, I do rec recognize freedom and choice. And that's what this is all about to me. I'm not, this is an opinion. I know someone wanted me to mention that if it's an opinion. This is a might than all opinion. My opinion is this is the Constitution and we he cannot go against the Constitution if there is any other recommendation or orders going over it. Now I'm not saying don't wear a mask and I'm not saying don't be six feet apart. But when it does go against the Constitution, where we can't travel from state to state, or we get fined for having too many people over for Thanksgiving, then it gets to where it's breaking the Constitution. And all we're looking at is making sure we nip this in the bud before that happens. None of the other recommendations would even be questioned. Everyone, and, and, I, and I'm pretty sure, I can't remember the lady's name that said, we're all reasonable people. We are. So she asked, why are we doing this? Because I feel that the governor, now how many people here have met the governor? And how many people have met the select board? Who do you trust more? That's what I'd like to know. You don't think we're gonna, you think we're gonna say, oh, everybody just have a free for all, don't use common sense. If you have, a, a, you know, a, a situation where you're at risk, Stay home, wear a mask. But that's what the governor is doing, is saying, if you don't, we're gonna find you. If you don't, there's gonna be consequences. I don't like that, that's against the Constitution. Oh, I'm sorry, the Vermont Constitution. Yeah. Okay, all right, um, Clay? Clay? Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, just a quick one. Um, I was, it would really help me understand the situation if you guys could go through the regulations in place and say what you're proposing. I don't feel like I understand what you're actually talking about. Okay, we're actually proposing to take the emergent, terminate the governor's emergency order and assume it locally. That's what we're proposing. And the reason why is so there will be no violation of the Constitution. That's why we're doing this. But then I feel like you mentioned earlier that there were some some recommendations that you wanted to, to keep and some you didn't. I, I feel like I want to understand, are there any recommendations that you are hoping to keep in place? And also, is there what is the system that you are going to evaluate to change the recommendations if this passes and if this goes forward? What is, what is that going to look like? I think we would mirror, mirror most of the 
governor's recommendations that do not do not violate the Constitution of the state of Vermont? That's a good answer, Mike. I know it is. <laughs> Carolyn, you had your hand up. We actually had a lawyer talk to us about this. So. I don't know who's talking there. Helen? Uh, this is Helen. I would just like to say I think that our Republican governor has done a fabulous job of keeping most people in the state of Vermont extremely safe, safer than anybody in the whole world. And you're asking me to take my trust in him and give it to you to be in charge of my health and safety. And I will say, as a citizen of this town, that under those circumstances, that I'm willing to do that. I, and I don't ever recall asking you to put your trust in anybody different. I just asked a question. I didn't say that at all. What, what I would like to say is the safety of this state, first of all, the state by population keeps us much uh, more socially distant anyways. But isn't it, someone also mentioned that by the town or the state of Vermont or Vermonters following the recommendations, the state has remained safe. You really need a governor to force you to do something? We all know what to do. So we need a governor now to say, we're in a state of emergency to force you to do the right things? I don't think so. I think we're all common sense adults that are going to do the best we can. Okay, Bill Levine? I think that if you want to go forward with your proposal, you need to lay, lay out those things that you are not going to continue to include that are in the current recommendations of the government. Well, right. I think at this point... Because otherwise you're asking people to accept some subjective judgment in the future. If there's something like the taking of personal property that you don't want to see included in your regulations, well, I think I covered that when I said it violates the Constitution. So if we read the Constitution, they can take your personal property, we, they, but they have to give you just yeah. and the statutes, common state for you get your money. Yeah, right now they're not doing that throughout the throughout the country. Bill, they're shutting down businesses without giving them just compensation. So that's what we want to avoid. So if they came in tomorrow and said the Billmont store. Shut down or else. And you give them a dime. And Bill Mons goes out of business. You think that's fair? No, that's a question. You think it's fair? No, there's got to be some. Right, that's what I thought. I don't think okay, it's fair. So this is, this is not complicated. This is pretty straightforward. It is not straightforward if you don't go line by line to say what you're going to do. We don't, we don't even know if we can win this yet. So there's no sense of going line by line. You're just trying to stall time here. This is a decision that the select board makes. It's not the people of the town don't vote on this. Well, I think that... This is not a town vote. It's kind of like what we did two weeks ago. Chris has had his hand up for a while. I, see. So somebody I think we should have people, other people yeah. talk too well. Right. I know that I tend to overrun a meeting, so I apologize. Chris. Chris. I have two points. One, I would like to address a comment by Mike about trust of the governor versus trust of the flight board. I, I would like to make a point that this is not about individual trust. This is about trust in systems and information frameworks and support networks. And personally, as a flight board member, I trust the medical resources and knowledge of the state level government more than that of the town of the, of the town of Stanford. The second point. I was going to say that two points. Yeah, second point is um, for me to be comfortable voting for this, I would need to know what changes you would like to make. I would need to know what the proposed changes would be. Okay. okay. Dave Orton? Oh, oh. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I just want to say I'm very appreciative of the select board for standing up for our rights. 
Uh, for the people who, this is obviously a controversial issue, um, realize that this board didn't do this three months ago. Why is it happening now? Why didn't it happen in September or October? The governor has started overstepping. The governor started telling basically that you can interrogate school children. That is 100% unacceptable. I don't care if this is the bubonic plague. The select board is protecting our rights. It's a legal fight. We could lose. But they need to stand up for our rights. We don't need any executive order. We're going to be common sense. I'm wearing a mask today because I have a very, very, very minor cough. So I'm wearing them. I doubt I have anything. I won't be here. But I don't want to scare anyone, so I have a mask on. People have common sense, especially if you've been living this for nine months. It's coming up now because the governor has lost the trust of a lot of the people. That's the bottom line. Select board's trying to make sure he doesn't go crazy. I don't know the governor. Maybe he's looking out for our best interests. But he's starting to make decisions that he did after the election, by the way. That's not coincidental. That makes me tr not trust him. Maybe I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, we'll find out. But I think the board is protecting all of us. And no one's saying, let's run around and have a rage, a rave and start jumping on each other. We're going to be smart. We're human beings. We're intelligent. People are going to be smart about this. We don't need any of those orders. Not one. Thank you for standing up for our rights. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Kevin? Yeah, my name's Kevin Hoy from Bennington. And I just wanted to reply to Helen a little bit. If we're going to give the governor credit, for a virus that has a 99.9% .9 survival rate, we also have to give them credit for the loss of business and the alcoholism and the addiction and the suicides and all of the loss of businesses and people that are starving to death and can't feed their kids. So you got to put this in a bigger perspective. My understanding, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're going to keep the same recommendations as the governor. We're just not going to enforce them because of the constitutional value and oppression on the people. Am I wrong there? And I did have a question about church and businesses. Are you allowed to go to church in Stanford, Vermont? Yes. Wow. I don't know the community church. Though. With I restrictions. Should, I should ask. But it's open? So we don't know. I don't know if the restrictions came from the state and forced the diocese of the church that I go to uh, or not. So uh, I did talk to a, uh, a priest in Massachusetts and some of the uh, restrictions that are put into the church were based on the health department of the town. So therefore, it was forced upon them by the health department. So what you're uh, saying is, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. It also, that also violates the Constitution, and it bothers me. Uh, but I don't know about the uh, town of Stanford. So, so, so what I'm hearing from you in, in regards to the church any other state, any other private business, they could be doing the same thing that you brave patriots are doing, correct? correct. Just a matter of standing. Correct. Thank you. I just wanted to say one thing. That in California, they have a lot of restrictions, which it looks like um, we're going towards. And their COVID is worse than any place else. And in Florida, they, they don't have all the restrictions, and they're, they're doing better. So it doesn't make a difference. See, to me, again, to me, this is, a, again, a, an opinion. It's not the board's opinion. It's my opinion. To me, this is not about COVID. Um, is it a natural disaster or not? If it's not a natural disaster, what was it, man-made in China? I don't know. So, Ooh, I mean, this, this doesn't make sense to if we, we nitpick what it is, what I'm saying is, is all, I, all I would like to see is that the governor's orders do not violate the Constitution. That's my big thing. It's not about being safe. You want to be safe? We can be safe. Everybody can be safe. The governor doesn't need to tell me what to do. 
And that, that's what's bothered me is if you violate the Constitution, then where's that end? Do we name anything in the name of safety and just go in and take your rights away? Why that? What attorney did you consult if you did not consult the town attorney? Your town council. Attorney Deborah Buckman. And Buckman. why? Uh, she, she, I guess she, she wrote, wrote an article country. about this in the True North News. And then she read about this town in the newspaper. And she went to pro bono. Okay, yeah. boss. For us. So we're kind of the first one that she it's wants to good. use for an example. So Chris, you were you were speaking before I was. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah, I was just saying the dictionary definition doesn't matter. Law language is not natural language. Pam so like sure. Whatever the dictionary says about natural disaster doesn't. That's I agree with that. That's for sure. Pam Tory. Yeah. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, so, you know, I understand uh, Americans um, don't like to be told what to do by the government. I mean, that's just part of the American DNA, and I don't like to be told what to do by the government. So, I can certainly understand um, people. Uh, Concern with the more and more and more and more infringement on their rights by the government because it is in fact happening and it's been happening for quite some time and it's coming to a head right now. Chris? Uh, yeah, so I understand that you're, you, Mike and Dan specifically, are interested in the constitutional aspect of this particular issue. But if we win, then the select board has to be in charge of making those rules. Yeah. And so you, I don't think you can reasonably say, yes, we should vote to move forward this without having a better sense of what those rules would be. And yes, I understand you want to say, we're going to have all the rules that don't conflict with the Constitution, but that's not actually a simple one. Like there are, there's lots and lots of lawyers and lots of discussion, like simply saying yes, this does or doesn't conflict with the Constitution, it's not a simple yes no question. It's a lot similar, simpler than you make out, Chris. Okay? The governor has a half a dozen orders in place right now. Right? The one we would not have is. You go across the border for something non-essential, you got to quarantine for two weeks, all right? Masks, what are most of you doing? What is most everybody doing? They're, they're social distancing and they're wearing masks if they're worried about catching the virus, okay? There's not a whole lot to this. Governor threw out about people at the house, number of people in the house, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So. It's, it's not rocket science. Even you, Chris, that like all the governor's orders and you'd like to see, you may want to see it a lot tighter. Nobody leave their house. Nobody visit, go anywhere. I mean, even with that, because you can still do that. You can still do that under this change, right? You're free. You can do whatever you want. Do not put words in my mouth. Do not put words in my mouth. I did not say any of that. I did not imply any of that. Please do not. You do imply that you put all your trust in the governor, and in none of these things, you haven't raised your voice to the kids being questioned in school. None of those obvious affronts against the Constitution have you even raised the slightest objective. So yes, I'm putting words in your mouth. Because somebody concerned about those types of things would raise their hand. And they would scream and yell about that kind of stuff. Yeah, and they're shouting. You know I'm shouting. I'm wound up. What I tell you. What horrifies me is that there's still people that are I think the rest of the state 
there's a lot of support for this in the state. And by the way, if we could please stop talking about the, the kids being asked who's, you know, who's going to their house and who's been, because the governor has rescinded that. Yes. So we have to step away from that. A little late. It's pretty important that it happened, though, isn't it? Okay. So 60 town residents signed a petition stating that they, they want the the town of Stanford to be a constitutional, a firm constitutional town. I know you keep saying we, we, we do a good job following the Constitution and upholding the Constitution. Thank you. And we want to continue. And 60 residents within a few days or a few hours, I don't know what took, how, what took these guys to get that. And tonight we have six people that are voicing their opinion in opposition of this. It seems to me that they're, and everybody's entitled to their view, but it seems to me that there would be a petition the other way if they weren't happy with it. We are not asking, we're not asking for anyone to be in fear. We're just saying don't break the Constitution. And you keep saying don't bring up the children, but that is important that it happened. And it is important that, that the governor's telling me I can't go see my parents. Or my brother, because if I do that, it's not essential. I can't do it. What you're saying is, well, he's not. He's not enforcing it. Don't worry, Mike. Well, then why are you wearing a mask? Why are you staying six feet apart? Because you're worried. It's not just about the safety. It's because you're worried. Why are people not opening up their restaurants? They're worried they're going to get shut down and they're not going to have their permits to stay open. It's not just about the safety. They're worried. They're using force. And that's what we're talking about. We're not afraid you know, to, to make decisions as we voted it for us to do. And we're not going to change things. All I'm saying is we don't want to go against the Constitution. And everybody keeps saying they know it doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. You don't think that a governor telling you that you can't travel to go see your parents but I can go to Mount Peel here, but I can't go 10 feet down the road? Does that make sense? Is that constitutional? So that's what we're talking about. So to me, it doesn't make sense that I can't go to Clarksburg, but I can go to the Northeast Kingdom. That's what it doesn't make sense. Or my parents can go to Boston, but they can't visit me on Christmas Day. That's what doesn't make sense. Can we go to Zach? Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so, I just want to ask, pardon my newbie, yet, but um, how does this actually work? Like, what happens? I mean, I feel like we're having a rich discussion with many different perspectives about a contentious issue, but how does this actually move forward? I mean, are we, are, are you guys bringing this to us as if it, it, it's, it's something that you're already moving forward? Does this go to a vote? Is this are you going to present a proposal with like absolute clarity around which constitutional things you're talking about taking in and taking out based on these speculative matters that may or may not happen? We discussed this in the executive session, the last select board meeting, and the board figured we should open it up to discussion to the townspeople's so we could all hear your points of view. So Zach, Zach, how it works, it, it, we didn't need to, but we did bring it to the townspeople, put it on the agenda. How it works is the board will vote on it. If we decide to, someone makes a motion, we'll vote on it. In statute, though, it says the governor has no control over your household. Correct. No control. Even in the emergency declaration. Correct. But he's pushing. <laughs> So yes, he's pushing and there's the potential for pushing. Yeah. So, so there so there's action that already happened. We know that, okay? The Christmas tree example. That's action that already happened. You can keep looking it up if you want, guys. You can't go over the state lines for non-essential things. That's action that's already happened. Unconstitutional. Can't this kind of unconstitutional. John Paul. Right? Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to hear what you guys think about this because Kevin had mentioned earlier too about churches and essential businesses. We talked about crossing straight lines, state lines. I hate that one. I gotta run down to North Adams all the time. So you, we all have probably no people down there. That's a pretty clear one. 
Uh, but there's a couple other things that have concerned me, um, you know, uh, capacity limits on businesses uh, and closing time limits. We don't have one in our town, but I know a lot of people, you know, in the, in the restaurant business and, you know, working at a bar, they've all been badly affected, like by this Reedsboro Inn. Uh, just last month, now they have to close at 10 o'clock. Wasn't like they got any cases traced back to them or something. We liked going up there and eating and, you know, having a beer. What's wrong with that? Right. And an even more important one, that's, that's, you know, it's nice to be able to go out and eat and everything. And um, like I think, and like you said, if we really saw the numbers from this and we really felt all in more in danger, we would use common sense. We wouldn't drive through their barricade at the flood down to the river because we understand that it's in place for our good. Some of these rules don't make sense. The other one I just want to point out is our church in town. First Amendment, a right to freedom of religion. Practice your religion. You're free to do so. The state cannot inhibit that. And all right. Well, how many people can that church fit? How many people can that church hold on a good day? Four o'clock mass. We used to probably have 50. 50, 50, 50 yeah. 50. So Not allowed what's the more. capacity limit on that now, Nancy? The bishop has set 25. So why does a restaurant have to close different hours now than they did before when their permits say they can stay open to a certain time when they open, they put their hard-earned money into it, they invested, and now they have to close early? For what reason? If all the people that don't want to go, don't go. And the people that want to go, go. If we don't send a message, this could be used in the future for so many other things to violate our Constitution. I'm asking what part of the Constitution do you feel is violated? Well, in, in I'm the, not asking what part of the governor's order do you feel In the Bill of Rights, it says we have the right to freedom and privacy, to pursue happiness. Uh -huh. Those types of pursuits of happiness are being violated throughout the state. But do you know on our Christmas tree lighting, we have citizens in this town called state troopers on us? Do you know that? State troopers, because I'm a liaison of law enforcement up here, state troopers contacted us, want to know what was going on. You know, that's kind of, talk about horrifying. Do you want the state troopers down here shutting us down for things like that? When we're, when we're not violating anything, but we had masks on. Someone mentioned through the rumor mill that we didn't have masks. We most certainly did have masks, most people. And if they didn't, they, had, they were six feet apart. And my wife volunteered her time to spray down a wagon so the kids could take rides with Santa Claus. Oh my goodness. And you were Santa outdoors. Claus. Yeah. You were outdoors. Pat, you were there, remember that? You were still in a jolly mood then, Pat. Yeah. I know you guys want to get out of here, but if I could just add real quick, this sure. this is a proud Vermont precedent, but it's not a precedent. There's actually a town in Georgia, a small town in Georgia, that became a constitutional autonomous zone as well, and that is spreading throughout America. But congratulations on being the first Green Mountain Boy town to stand. I support it. Are you guys going to vote on this, or how does it work from here? So I'm going to make a motion okay. that we... Terminate the governor's emergency order pursuant VSA Title 20, Section 13-3. Yeah. <clears throat> of local recommendations for safety and protection. Just how it's written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Here? Um, yeah, because we can go to the lawyer and find out about the definition of um, hazards and everything. That's what, all part of this. So I say aye. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to stay. I make a, make a decision. You can't stay. No. Yes or no? No. Okay. Okay. Huh. Chris? No, you don't have to. No. That's why you decision. That's what we're voting for. Yeah. Don't be afraid to say no. So, so Chris, Chris? Wait, wait a minute. Chris? Chris? Uh, we're in the middle of a vote. We're sorry. Chris? Chris? Okay. Nay. Nay. 
Okay. Um, so the motion is passed. And now the, the next step, Dan, you will get in touch with in the attorney with. She said this is going to get stressful, so I said I was up to the task. I don't know how it's going to be stressful on me. She's the one going to be arguing it in court. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll go if they will let me talk, but it's probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> she said you couldn't even uh, hand the letter to the governor. Oh, that's right. If he wins, she said I might be able to deliver the order to the governor. 